All right. Uh, so so you, you mentioned several possibilities, but which of those did you want to deal with? That's why I'm trying to figure out what is that underlying, that, that key specific event. That's what I'm trying to figure out because it's. Well, wait, wait, there's possibly an error right there. Okay. Um, you're, you're suggesting there's a key specific event. Um, there's likely several. <laughs> there's likely, likely a series of them over time, all of which have contributed to this general topic. And the general topic, there was, we were talking about, about lack, insecurity, jealousy, envy. envy. Yeah, envy and jealousy. It doesn't feel good. That's the thing. It feels, yeah. it doesn't feel good. The, the anxiety, the stress that's causing it too. Okay. Well, let's just, Pick one of those topics because the, the general idea of addressing all, any of those is still going to be the same process. So just pick one and let's just go with that and see what okay. happens. I would say insecurity. Insecurity. In relationships. I'm pretty confident in other things, but when it comes to relationships, I think I have a little bit of insecurity there. Okay, so when you're speaking of relationships, are you speaking of relationships in general, romantic relationships? Uh, can you be more specific? Romantic relationships with men. Okay, all right. That's specific now. <laughs> I okay. need to stress men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't quite hear that. You need what? I said I, I'm, I need to ex, ex I need to stress the word men, you know. Oh, oh, oh stress the word men. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> listen. These days, you just don't know, right? I need to be clear. Yeah. And okay. To get straight and be straight about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Um, this is this is a preamble. As a preamble, men are nothing more than little bitty boys grown up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and by the way, so are girls. Little bitty girls grown up. You know that's that. But they still have lots of unresolved emotional issues, just like you do, just like I do, and everybody else you know, okay? We all have unresolved emotional issues, and we come into a relationship, and, you know, this is somebody you didn't know when they were two years old being abused or whatever the case may be, okay? Um, or had been rejected and whatever they've gone through, you don't know those things. Okay. Right. And they don't know that about you either. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. And so the two of you get together and, you know, maybe, maybe it uh, has some beginning good stuff. Um, but eventually you're going to start triggering each other. That's just what happens. You know, you will right. say something, certain gesture, tone of voice, a habit you have and vice versa. The two of you will trigger each other. Okay. Well, that's sort of a general kind of thing. Yeah. So, but let me ask you about you specifically. Is it, is it that you have some difficulty attracting them or you attract them and then it falls apart? Or what, ha what, ha what, what needs to be corrected? Put it that way. Well, I attract them, but I run away. Oh, okay. You attract them. So, and so. Go ahead. It's not that I reject them. It's like something always happened and I run away. It's like no. they try to ask me out. Then, then something, I, I get blocked. I couldn't hear or whatever. Then I run away. And then they try it again. <laughs> and the same thing. And I notice a pattern. Sure. And then certain things trigger this insecurity. Like, okay, you know, if you see, and that's the thing, well, we're thinking, you know, you see a picture of them talking to someone, oh my gosh, he's not interested in me now. He was interested, now he's not, you know, what did I do? But, you know, it's cascade, and then that's overanalyzing. It's not even. Yeah, okay, you know. all right. Well, all right, I could be wrong here, but just as a first blush at this, it would seem to me, and you need to correct me, Sarah, if I'm not, if I'm not on target, um, because if you just go along with me, then we're 
going indoors and we're wasting our time. So correct me if I'm if I have some wrong perceptions here. But what comes to my mind first of all is that okay, so you attract you attract a a gentleman, a possible romantic partner. Yay, we all like that. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Somehow or other. He asks you out, or maybe you go out. You didn't say this, but you know things happen or whatever. And eventually you go, oh, no, no, no. And somehow or other, you repel them. You didn't use that word, but am I right? Uh, well. No, no, you said you run away is what you said. Yeah, I don't repel them. I run away. It's like yeah. almost like I don't want them to know that I'm interested too. Okay, well, that's okay. That's one possibility. I, I see another one. And okay. correct me this. And that is somewhere along the line in your past, typically your childhood, there have been, like all of us, okay, some rejections. Okay. And and oftentimes they are not always, but sometimes they are romantic rejections. You got dumped by a boyfriend and when you were in third grade or something like that. Okay. Didn't feel good. Or you've been rejected by as you were growing up by peers teachers, parents, maybe siblings, you know, and the whole idea, and please correct me if I'm wrong, okay, the whole idea of being rejected, because that does not feel good. Nobody likes the feeling, oh, I got rejected, right. I got dumped, you know, whatever. It just does not feel good. And depending on how intense that is way back when it first started, you will avoid it at any cost, including somehow or other. I mean, this fellow may get really interested in me and then he may dump me and I don't want that feeling. Now, I, 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 I put a big guess out there. Does that work? Yeah, it does. Okay. And so... And Go ahead. Let me just also, I just kind of came to mind. It's kind of not rational, the fact that if someone's interested and then I put up in my mind, it's like, okay, if I reciprocate, he's going to reject me and then I block it off and then I run away. But then it just doesn't make sense if, if the person's already interested and been trying for years, you know, it doesn't make sense. Well, of course it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make, let's say it differently. It doesn't make logical sense, right? That's, at least that's the way I would put it. It doesn't make logical sense. However, we, all of us, I'm guilty too here, okay? We, 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 we don't always respond to what's logical. We respond to the emotional impact. That's what really guides the behavior. So what I'm hearing is, okay, here's somebody I'm interested in. Yay, they're showing more interest, <gasps> but they might reject me until you subconsciously maybe replay. Oh, oh rejection in the past. I don't like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run away because I, even though I might like this relationship and even though it might go someplace, I am so, I so want to avoid the feeling of rejection that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it off before it even has a chance to happen. Yeah, it's like this flight or fight kind of response. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. Well, all right. Uh, so what we need to do then is to collapse whatever it was that happened in the past that gives you that illogical response. Uh, now, true True, even if we do this collapsing and you have a, a, a boyfriend and it, it goes further than it has in the past without you running away, that doesn't mean he, he's not going to somehow or other go someplace else and reject you. That's it. Right. That, that's, that, <laughs> that's part of how the whole process works. Okay. And, and you can do the same thing. You can say, well, I'm not interested in him. I mean, that's just part of how it works. But what we want to. What we want okay. to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sarah. I just want to add quickly, Gary, that that's another thing that there's that fear. 
he may be. So I rather not invest my time because of that possibility. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So, so there's the fear of rejection and why waste my time if he may split anyway? Okay. All right. Well, the last one, why waste your time? That, that's just part of the process. You have to go through a few relationships here and there to learn what you can do or can't do and how they work and all that kind of stuff before you, before you finally end up with one. I don't know very many people. There are some do, but very many people I, who, who just have one relationship and it just, that just works forever. That's pretty rare, actually. Are you with me? Yeah, and that's the thing that what scares me. I, I've already turned down so many relationships and proposals and stuff because I don't, because of that fear. Okay. Proposals, and, proposals like marriage proposals? Yeah, I, I don't want to get to that part. There's, there's something there. I can feel it. That's the thing. It's like, I'll block it. Like, I don't want to, yeah, that avoidance. Yeah. Okay. Well, got it. Yeah. So then the obvious question, Sarah, if we're going to start to look for specific events uh, underlying all this, so we can collapse them so you don't replay all that stuff and you can move forward. Okay. Yeah. Is um, where in your past were you previously rejected romantically or otherwise? And it really hurt. Well, I think they, it was, I mean, I'm not talking about, well, I rejected a lot of them because I just didn't want to get involved, but there was one specific incident in 2004, there was someone. I think that's probably a specific event where that feeling feels like that. Uh, there was someone that you were interested in and then they, they rejected you or you ran away? I kind of read, well, here's this, they didn't reject me. It's, things were progressing, except there's someone I know personally who was also interested and asked if I was interested and I kind of denied my feelings about it and told the person to go for it the second person yeah okay and i know this person personally all right but let me let me stop you there saying um that's not quite where i thought we were going to go let me restate my question for you it's not it's not a place where you a previous place where you ran away i'm talking about a place someplace probably way back early even in childhood where you were rejected romantically or otherwise you got this oh, i don't want this feeling i mean it could it could have been your parent you know an abusive comment by your parent for example we had nothing to do with romance a feeling of rejection that's the that's the likelihood is that's what you're replaying currently and that's what's causing you to run away because you're avoiding that feeling okay so that's where we want to go. Do you have, can you locate, identify some event like that? I think there's so many of them that I don't even remember. <clears throat> it could be my parents. It could also be with my cousin where I think I was five. The mom said, don't play with her. It's something I said, I think, or, or even in the third grade, but that was five, I think around five or no, six. And where the mom said, don't play with her. I feel rejected, you know? I don't get that. Why do you feel rejected? Because your mother said, go play with her. No, no. I went to stay over at my cousin's place. And I think we had, my cousin and I, we had a little disagreement. So she told her mom. So her mom just said, don't play with her. But I overheard it, and oh. I that was painful. Okay. All right. All right. 
Well, see, that would be one specific event where you ended up getting rejected and it hurt. All right. Now, as you said earlier, there are probably lots of them. Maybe your parents, maybe. And, and most of us as kids, you know, grow up and get rejected in school and by our parents. And, and even if we're not rejected, we somehow feel rejected sometimes anyway. Okay. And we don't want that. We don't like that. So what, since there may be several, many of those, um, here, let me back up a second. You are familiar with our metaphor, um, the tabletop and table legs? Oh, I need to re uh, go back to it. Well, let me go over for you now because it's important, okay? Uh, here's the general metaphor is this. This is a tabletop, okay? And a, a tabletop is held up by table legs, all right? Remove the table legs, tabletop falls, all right? The tabletop here is fear of rejection mm -hmm. for our purposes, held up by, by table legs, but each of the table legs are specific events in your life where you were rejected. Now, here you are in current time, and you've had many of these, okay? And here you are in current time with a romantic relationship, possible, Ooh, but you don't want to feel the rejection of getting dumped someday because it doesn't work. So you're replaying all this stuff here subconsciously. Oh, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. You may not be consciously aware of it, but that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. All right. And so what we need to do is then take care of these table legs. Once they are gone and the sting of the rejection is gone, then you're back into normal time, you know, you know, relationships don't always work out. Okay. So what next, next, you know, <laughs> you're not going to run away from every one of them because of, because of the, because you resolve these things here. Okay. So we're going to start deal with one of them. Now there's several. Okay. But we're going to deal with one. And if, if that fits for you, we'll deal with one. And it's going to be, it's going to be the one where your cousin's mother said, don't play with her. Okay. That's one out of many. We'll see what we do with the one. So do this for me, Sarah. Just close your eyes for a minute, if you would. Okay. And, and go back to this time when your cousin's mother said what she said. And really get into it and tell me currently as you remember it. Now, as you, as you, your current intensity now, as you remember it on a scale of zero to 10. It's a nine. Still, and I've been oh. working on it for a while, but it's still a nine. Okay, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Um, when you call it a nine, are there any physical symptoms that go with that? Some tightness in the body, someplace or something? Yeah, the impression came as I block out my hearing. I have some hearing issues that doctors have not understand why I've had fluid in my ear for so long, did the surgery, did everything, so always blocked. And what came to me at that moment was, it could be that I didn't, I block out that pain of hearing what she said, so it doesn't hurt me. Sure. And my back hurt, and then I can feel in the middle of my chest, you know, this blockage. So when you were Imagining this event, you were getting some hearing issue, a back issue. What was the other one? It just feels like this blockage in my chest. I don't have, I mean, I'm not saying that, I, I, I just heard that my hearing could be related to not wanting to hear okay. what the mom said. Wouldn't surprise me at all. And it, my guess is it wouldn't only be just what, your cousin's mom said it would be what someone else said and the, 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 several more yeah. table legs under a hearing issue. Okay. Yeah. But it's possible that as we deal with this one, we're going to start dealing with both the hearing issue and the, I want to run away from relationship issues, right. rejection issue. Okay. Possible. We're just exploring here. Okay. Right. But what we want to do is, is, is um, work on this one and then see what, 
see what happens. Okay. So let me um, let me do a little setup here first. And this is this is some of our more advanced stuff, and you're familiar with all this because you're one of our members. And, right. And and so on. Um, so we're gonna get a little bit into reframing and this kind of thing. So um because we want to put as much on the table for unseen therapists as we can, right? So let's go back in time here now. And, and it was your cousin's mother. What was the word she said? I want to write those down as, you, as well as you uh, remember. Don't play with her. Don't play with her. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, I don't know your cousin. I don't know her mother. I'm just going to take those words. I'm going to get behind them a little bit. And you and I explore some, okay? Because what we want to do is look at the source of this. And we want to understand the source, okay? Uh, and, and that helps us get freedom from it. We're not going to excuse behaviors. Right. We're going to understand them. Were you, were you raising your hand there? Yeah. A minute ago? Yeah, okay. I just also want to add, it came up to me, this impression that... I wanted to stay longer. I was supposed to stay longer with them because school was out. Yeah. And I <clears throat> asked to go home. Because you, asked, you asked to go home. Yeah. Because I was staying over their place because school was out. We'd stay over just to play and sleep over. It's like a slumber thing, you know? Yeah. And I was six. And then after what happened, I asked the dad to take me home. I started crying. Then I went home. But deep down, I didn't want to go home. I wanted to be there. Okay. So I noticed a pattern in my life now where I want something, but there's that oh, block. Okay, let me say that back to you because I, I just want to make sure I understand it well. So you hear your mother's cousin say, well, don't play with her. And then if I hear it right, young you, age, age six, six, uses, this isn't a term you use, I'm going to use it, finds an excuse. Well, I want to go home. Mm -hmm. Okay. It becomes an excuse to help avoid the real, the rejection. Don't play with her. Did, did I, do I have it right? Yeah, now that you put it that way then it makes sense to me i didn't know at the time okay but yeah all right even though deep down my desire was to stay there all right got it but we I have another cousin her brother you know. yeah but we you manufactured you manufactured an excuse to help soften the rejection i i, I think i said it right okay all yeah. right well, aren't you clever? <laughs> How does it work out for me right now? <laughs> now that I'm older, you know, now that you mention it. And this has been very helpful so far to really see that. Yeah. Okay. That. Well, all right. But I still want to do a little yes. reframing, if you will, having to do with the, your cousin's mother. Now, I'm trying to put myself in her shoes, knowing very little about all of this. Okay. I'm just hearing sort of what you say. So that's why you always need to correct me if, there's, if I'm not on point, okay? But I'm, so, so I'm the mother and, and uh, I'm now understanding that you and her daughter, your cousin, were having this argument and weren't getting along. Okay, well, little kids do that, okay? <laughs> they are very good at it. They squabble and fight and they don't get along and, you know, so, sometimes and, and so it happens. So I'm, I'm the mother now. And so your cousin goes to her or she sees this thing or whatever. And she says, well, don't play with her. If you're having a problem with her, I mean, don't play with her. Okay, mm -hmm. sort of a logical adult thing who has no clue what those words mean to you. Now, uh, that's how I'm sort of seeing it. Would that does that seem right? Yeah, th the mom was working or doing something, and it's like little kids going to tell the mom, like, 
she did that to me. So the mom's yeah. like, well, don't play with her. But to me, I took it. Yeah. Okay. You know. Well, the point, the, the point maybe of this reframing conversation is that it is your interpretation as a six-year-old that causes the problem for you. What she was saying was probably what most adults would say. Well, I don't, don't play with her then. Okay. Not knowing how impactful that is on you. She probably, my guess is she had no clue. Right. If she did, she would have chosen other words or sat down with you or the two of you or I mean, I, I'm just I'm just presuming she's just busy with her world and two kids are fighting and just, just, don't, just don't play with her. OK, I can see that anyway. Now, do I portray it well, do you think, or, or would it be something else? No, I think that's correct, because the mom was in the bedroom, so she did not see our interaction or anything. Yeah. OK. So. All right. So you hear don't play with her, you take it on as, uh-oh, I'm rejected. I'm going to throw some other words out here. Uh, I don't count. Something's wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I did something wrong. I'm not lovable. I mean, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had You're to. It was so painful, I can tell you. It really yeah. cut through the heart. Of course. Of course. And but your cousin's mother had no clue about what was going on with you. Right. Okay. In fact, you I even tell them. Yeah, you made up an excuse to. Okay. All right. Great. Well, six-year-olds do that. Clever you. I it's... just cried, and the dad thinks I'm. You know, asked if I want to go home. I just nodded my head, and that's it. Even though deep down, okay. I wasn't speaking my truth. Okay. Now, do can you see, Sarah? And I, I don't want to impose on you. To just, you've got to always correct me, okay? But can you see how something like that, unresolved at age six and never got resolved, still shows up in your current age when you're coming across something that might be rejection, something you want to avoid? Because as you said, that cut right into your heart. That's what you told me. Mm -hmm. Like big. It's still a nine when you think about it. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So whether you're consciously aware of it or not, that and other things like it, other tables, other table legs under the tabletop, other specific events, okay, um, shows up and says, oh, avoid, 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 because you don't want that feeling again. Yes? Right. Again, I... I, I um, I don't want I don't want to impose the ideas on you. I'm going to make sure I'm, it right. it fits. It fits. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So as a practical matter then the mother in this case, your cousin's mother wasn't really rejecting you. You as a 6-year-old were picking it up that way. Okay. And I would have to guess that chances are it, it hits you so hard because you were also rejected even earlier in life by parents, siblings, or whatever. Yes. And, and, and the mother just saying this hits you particularly hard because it was bouncing off even of other unresolved stuff. Yes? Right. Okay. So the other, other unresolved stuff that we're not going to work on today is probably more foundational that we are going to work on. But well, I want to give you the idea of this, this one so you can, we're recording it for you so you can use it and replay it and, and see what happens. So, all right. With that in mind, why don't we do an unseen therapist session? Okay. Uh, I'll just narrate the whole thing. All right. Uh, you just, I mean, easy peasy, right? You just go, go along with it, okay? All right. All right. So if you would, just close your eyes. Close your eyes and, and to take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And then just shift your focus to recall a, a simple little loving moment in your life. And whenever you're there, just nod your head. All right, good. 
And all we're doing here with that recalling, with that recalling the loving moment, just as a reminder, is just trying to align ourselves with the pure love of the unseen therapist. We aren't there yet, but we're just letting her know, hey, we're listening. Okay, we're trying to li- align with you. So, and she's always here. She's always talking. She's always guiding. We're not always listening. <laughs> so, at any rate, shift your focus now. And there you are over visiting with your cousin. The two of you are having an argument. And the mother, your cousin's mother in the bedroom, wasn't even paying attention to this argument, had her own life to live and things. And she just two little kids were squabbling like all two little kids do, all young kids do. And so her advice was, well, don't play with her. It hits you really hard, really hard. You don't like that at all. It feels big time rejection, even though it was most likely met just very casually as a simple solution to a everyday problem to her anyway, but not to you, not to you. That's what's important. It's your response that's important here because you're still replaying it in current time. So we're going to represent this um, this response, this rejection response. Oh, something's wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I don't count. <gasps> you know, that, I want to avoid this at all costs type response. The nine that you were talking about that cuts right into your heart. We're going to represent that metaphorically as an unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, 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 like that. You don't have to make your heart vibrate. We're not asking you to do that. It's an imaginary thing. It's a way, it's a metaphor, a way to represent this emotional turmoil to uncertain unseen therapist unseen therapist sees it and in your imagination she she's very calm she understands you're picking up stuff that and you're still carrying it around it's perfectly normal for a six-year-old of course of course of course but you don't need to really carry it around today it doesn't really do any good it's in the way of your relationships and, but it still stings so In your imagination, she's sending a nice, cool, loving, healing breeze towards you. It enters your body, surrounds your heart, ta-ta, 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 like that. And in all that love, the vibration, all that the unwanted vibration, all that um, emotional turmoil can't survive. And so it goes to ta, 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 ta. Now, let's do that again. There you are. As you're remembering all of this, you get the nine, it cuts right into your heart. You have a, you have a, a chest thing, a hearing thing, a a back thing, all of that, just in remembering it. Represent it as the unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, ta-ta. Here comes the cooling breeze. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And now, Sarah, in your, take your time and repeat this yourself as many times as you want until you've gone as far as you think you can go. There are no grades for this, by the way. You don't get an A or a C or anything. You just do what you do with it, and we'll talk about it, okay? But, but once again, here's all this rejection emotion. Ta-ta, 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 the cooling breeze, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. So do that a time or two or three or whatever. I'll wait for you, plenty of time. And whenever you're done, just open your eyes, and we'll talk. Okay. All right. Well, were you were you able to um, follow along, or did you have a bunch of competing thoughts, or what happened? 
No, I follow along and <clears throat> I just noticed that that blockage, the chest area felt much better. All right. What about the back? I can feel the tingling in my neck still and the back, but that's been going on before. So, but that probably is just a structural, but yeah, that, that feeling in the chest felt much better. Oh, okay. Um, notice anything in the hearing? We'll see in the, if I can hear it <laughs> better when people talk to me. That, that I would have to check. All right. Later on. Okay. All right. All right. Well, all right. Let's just do a little test for now. Okay. So if you would close your eyes for me, close your eyes, go back to this event now and, and uh, rerun that movie and tell me if you're still a, still a nine. Probably, I think it's a seven in the sense that I felt more neutral thinking about it. And I just feel the blockage is in the neck, so it makes sense. Like I just kind of dipped it up. But it has dropped. Well, I can't okay. feel the shoulder. All right, open your eye. Okay, good, good. All right. Now, an important question here very important question, is what makes it a seven? Why is it a, why isn't it zero? What's left over? What makes it a, something makes it a seven? Can you tell me what that is? Let me go back and think. Let's see. I think it's because I wasn't able to defend myself or speak up for myself and tell my side of the story. And I couldn't communicate and speak my truth about it. Like, hey, I have every right to be there. This is not what happened. All right. Or, you know. All right. Now, let me point something out to you. V very good feedback, by the way. Excellent feedback. Very helpful. Very helpful. If you listen to your words, the words you're telling me about why it's a seven is because you're unable to speak your truth. You're unable to stand up for yourself, talk back, etc. That's different than I feel rejected. I think there's something else that was under that, that feeling rejected, okay. but there was that component too. Okay. But that's, see, 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 that's the important, I'm sorry. That came up. Okay. Well, all right. And that happens with some frequency here. Um, because see, we did not put that issue on the table. Yeah. Okay. We didn't, we were putting the feeling of rejection on the table. We weren't putting up the, oh, and now I feel helpless about speaking my truth. Right. That, wasn't, that wasn't a part of our conversation. It wasn't on the table. Okay. So let's try something else. I, we're going to be tested again, but we want to be a little more specific. So close your eyes. Close your eyes. Go back and rerun that movie. But this time, stay on the feeling of rejection, not on can't speak up or that kind of thing. The feeling okay. of rejection. And tell me if that's still a seven or a nine or some other number. I would say it's a five because I didn't like hearing what she said to, about me or to me. Because say it again, because you didn't like say it again. What the mom said, don't play with her. I mean, she could have said something else instead mm -hmm. of don't play with her. Well, yeah, she could have. She could have, but yeah. Again, she's trying not to get involved in some issue that I'm I'm supposing she thinks is just some 
two little kids squabbling and they that's what they do okay um all right well okay that phrase that sentence which is you went from a on the rejection part of it we went from a nine to a five yeah okay now I, I, i'm gonna do one, one little more piece here if we can all right so close the eyes close the eyes we've already invited unseen therapists let's go back now to that specific event and let's zero in on the words themselves don't play with her just so we're going to use a different metaphor just to just to give a little variety here so it's like, there you are, the young you, and she, you hear these words, don't play with her. And it's like a knife into your heart. That's the way you described it, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Right. So imagine, if you will, her words are coming out and they're like, her words are forming a knife and they're coming at you. An unseen therapist gently, very gently stands in front of you and just deflects the knife just deflects the words or let's say it a little differently she lets the knife go into her but it's not going to bother her at all as it goes through her and she's standing in front of you now okay, as it goes through her it just dissolves it just dissolves what's your favorite flavor of ice cream vanilla vanilla it becomes vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. A knife, unseen therapist can do that. This nasty comment, don't play with her. No longer is a knife, it's vanilla ice cream. <laughs> it goes through here and is sitting right in front of you, vanilla ice cream. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. The mother really didn't mean it in the way that you took it. Mm -hmm. So have a little vanilla ice cream with it. And when you're done, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Uh, it's better. I can see myself kind of sh shaking it off at that moment. Like well, if she were to say it, like, okay. Well, okay. Whatever. Um, yeah, it was all we really did there, Sarah, was just took got a little more specific with it. That's what we did. But we're always testing. We're always testing. So close your eyes now and, and go back to that, looking for just the rejection and those particular words. And tell me if you're still a what a five or some other number. It went down to a three. I feel a lot better in the chest area. Like the block is just gone. I can feel that. Something's changing. Is it still there? I think it's better because that time I even bit myself because the pain was so strong <laughs> to numb the pain. I was six, but you know, yeah, it's better. I a lot, lot better. Well, you should be a one or zero now. Okay, because so sometimes it just it it takes a little time. No, Is I can it? feel the unseen therapist working. Okay. Like, literally working on something clearing things up i can feel it how do you feel it tell me how you feel it i felt like this force that kind of descended and something moved around okay not everybody feels this by the way okay uh some do some don't you don't have to feel it or um or not it's not a requirement to get right. the result. So, so let's put some perspective on this, okay? 
First of all, you're going to want to test this again tomorrow morning. We never want to be fooled by a temporary result. Okay. So tomorrow morning, when you wake up, run it again, but looking for the rejection and those words and the things we actually dealt with. Okay. What we actually put on the table. Okay. okay. And see how those things are. If you get, if you happen to get some uh, more intensity, uh, I would I would urge you to to uh, review lesson number four in our, your advanced okay. lessons in the course, and that talks about be, uh, the likelihood there is you are shifting off to some other events. You, you already told me there's lots of other events before age six in your sure. life. Okay, yeah. and so it might have been better to start with something even further, more foundational back in time. Okay. Um, but chances are, if you come up with some intensity tomorrow morning and another time you might test, it's because it's bouncing off of some stuff earlier still. Okay. And you need to go back further still. And further. But the idea here is that if you go back to the specific events in your life that underlie the rejection type thing and take the sting out of them as we apparently have done here with this one event. Remember, lots of table legs under the tabletop, okay? We just dealt with one, all right? Apparently we've done something worthwhile with that, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you do another and another, and after a while then the whole thing starts to fade, the stings don't get replayed, and the next time a gentleman shows interest, you can go ahead and have your interest. It may or may not work out, but you're not gonna run away because of the fear of the sting that's the thought anyway right okay now i'm going to test again i'm going to test i'm always wanting to test close the eyes run the movie again but this time we're going to do it a little differently okay this time you're going to consciously purposely look for what's not done yet so exaggerate the sights the sounds, the feeling, exaggerate your cousin's mother saying those words, make them louder. The knife that goes into your heart, make it, see if you can't make it sting more. Do it, do whatever you can to make it, to bring up discomfort and let me know what happens. You're looking for what's, what's not done yet. Well, I just see myself being more stronger and confronting my cousin, letting her know that I know what she did. Oh. That's what I saw. Okay. Well, that's, that sounds, I don't want to put words in your mouth, okay? But that sounds like the feeling of rejection doesn't seem to be very big. Not anymore, I think. All right. All right. That's good. That's good. Test it again tomorrow, okay? Next week, you're always looking for what may not be done yet, but chances are we've done something with that one table leg, okay? More table legs, and the more, the more you do, the softer all that gets. Yeah, I've been working on that specific event for a lot of times, and this has been very profound and <laughs> quickly shifted. And I'll continue to check. Okay. Sure. Well, what you can do now, this is all recorded. I'll send you the recording is you can replay this a time or two or three or whatever you want. Okay. You could even take it and plug in other specific events into it. it takes a little skill to do that, but you'll you get the idea of it. Um, and that might help you get more and more and more out of, out of what's going on. Thank you so much, Gary, for your helping me just, really see the situation in that because there is a specific event in my current life that I, that triggered this. And now that when I look at that specific event, I don't feel that strong of a sting, but I will continue to work more. And so I don't overthink and overanalyze. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. Then if it, anything more you want to talk about? I think this is it. Do you have any other guidance or direction where I need to 
or your impression so that I can do the personal peace procedure and follow these steps so that I can, I'm pretty sure there's something else be, before six that I need to work on. But if you have any impressions that came to you that you want to share with me, I'm going to work on it and I'll give you some feedback and then well, you, you. you did say something about you having a number of rejection events, at least that you as a child would see as rejection, okay. perhaps with parents and one thing and another. So, I mean, that's where I would, that's where I would go. I would go as far back as you can go, okay. as far back as you can, the further back you go, the more foundational it's like to be. I would point, I would point this out to you. Um, when you go way back, your memory starts, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't remember what happens when you're one. Okay. Probably. Okay. I, I mean, I don't. <laughs> um, but what's important here is not having the details of the specific event just right. That's not so important. What's important about, cause we're not going to change the details anyway. Okay. Because it, it's like trying to change a baseball score in the past. You just you don't change it. Okay. So what happened, we're not going to change. But what we can change is your emotional response to it. That's what we just did. Your emotional response was rejection to this one event. All right. So you can when you go back to young ages, younger and younger and younger, you can even make up. That's one of your one of the lessons in your course, by the way. You can even make up the specific event. If you make one up and you get triggered by it, it's the emotional trigger that we're after. Okay. Example, you can say, okay, I'm, I'm one years old and my, I'm going to completely make this up. All right. I'm one years old. I'm in my crib and my father comes in and he's drunk and he throws a crib he, topples a crib over and I fall out of my crib and I'm crying and nobody cares. Okay. I, I made that up completely. Okay. Right. Now, if you make that up and even though that may or may not have actually happened, if you get worked up about it, Oh, that's, what's important. Take, go ahead and take that made up specific event as though it is absolutely true work on with unseen therapists, just as though it were true. Because remember, you're aiming at the emotional response, not how perfectly the details fall in place. Right. So that's one way to go back further in time. Okay. Anything else? Let's see. That's, I'll start working on it. I'll get back to you tomorrow. Uh, and about the video and there was one thing I want to say I don't remember so yeah I don't remember but <laughs> okay well you can write to me let me know okay all right um yeah this has been fantastic thank you so much Gary for your time your guidance and knowledge about this Okay. I mean, it was just gnawing at me. It felt uncomfortable trying well, to figure it out. We don't. We want. We want to have freedom, don't we, Sarah? Yes, okay. it's the freedom. Oh, actually, I remember now. The reason I said that there were more. Of course, we all have these specific events that happen, occur. Some more than others, and I know for me there were a lot because, especially if the conditions have been chronic. Because there's a lot of the unresolved issues. Yeah. yeah. So. And the more you deal with those and the better you get at this, the more freedom you get. Chances are the hearing's going to come back out better, the back thing, and then all that's sort of going to start fading because the cause, the cause is fading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Much right. love. All right, dear. Thank you. you Bye. Bye.
Oh, 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 oh,